My dear friends, pilgrims all, thank you very much for joining us for the Tuesday edition of Good Day Grenada. I'm George Grant. Today is the 21st day of the month, and uh, as always, as always, got great program line, lined up for you this morning. Uh, yeah, we got company, so I'm not going to be alone in here this morning. I see that Anthea Rello. Anthea's on a roll, man. She is on a roll this morning. Ha. Ah, congratulations, Anthea. You set the example. Uh, by the way, um, just let me uh, check here and uh, make sure that I'm right about what I'm about to say. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know that for the past week or so, uh, we have not been popping up on the GrenadaBroadcast.com website. Well, I see that we are this morning, and I'd like to say a very special thank you to our friend uh, Keeve, who has been working his little butt off to make sure that that happens. Thank you, Keeve. Thank you, Keeve. Hello, Grims. Let's take a look at... Uh, what we're going to get into this morning. Yes, here we go. We're going to talk a little bit about estate planning, lifetime trust and will. This is a piece, another one of those pieces that's been uh, shared with us by Mr. Hewitt Lane. Uh, I don't have to tell you who Hewitt Lane is, uh, one of the Grenada 17. Uh, this gentleman has been doing his part to contribute to the development of our minds, helping us to understand the law. Okay? We'll get to that in just a wee bit. We also have for you this morning an update, if you will, on the fire at Grenville. Yesterday, the PRGPF, the Organated Police Force, they uh, issued a statement explaining a couple of things which I thought would be of uh, great interest to you. So uh, we'll share that with you. Then we have the National Report. And then he's coming in. Mr. Ray Roberts is going to be joining us. He's going to be sitting in that little chair over there. Um, but first... Let's get down to uh, our usual hellos and highs and good mornings. We said that Anthea is the winner this morning. Mr. Benedict Cador uh, winds up second on what he is describing as a thriving Tuesday. Thank you, sir. Want to share some of uh, whatever you're thriving on with us? Please do. Carlene Vespray. And Bradley Vespray are both their husband and wife team, 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 team. I admire these people. Uh, don't know them, but <laughs> I admire them. Anybody who's so kind to show up here as a couple, uh, you're more than welcome. You make us really happy. Thank you very much. Good morning, Margaret. Don't know what it's like in New York with you guys this morning. Uh, Kipling Francis is sending God's blessings, and uh, Trevor Pascal. Is this the Trevor Pascal that I, I only know one Trevor Pascal? It's a guy who works with Digicel. If it is you, Trevor, thank you, bro. Not just for popping up, but for uh, the major improvement we've had in uh, distribution. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, he's saying good morning to you guys as well. Arthur Langine is, uh, <laughs> he says, happy brother, happy Tuesday, Brother George. Looking forward to hear what you have to say today. What? You didn't come here to hear what Georgie Porchy has to say. You came here to hear what the pilgrims have to say. You guys are the ones this program's all about. So, Having done the introductions this morning, let us get down to uh, Margaret says, Brr, it's cold. It's in the 20s this morning in New York. Mags, let me tell you, girl, 
you would just love to be here. I just, as always, just before sitting in this chair, stand on the balcony out there and take a look at the beauty with which I am blessed, being able to have this, this view here every, every day. And I'll tell you, I'm really happy because today there are three, not one, not two, but three cruise ships in port today. So it uh, looks like our visitors are in for a treat today. So there you have it. Now, let's get down to business here on this Tuesday morning. We're going to begin with one of those periodic articles from Mr. Hewitt Lane as he tries to contribute to the good of Grenadian society. It is captioned, Estate planning, lifetime trust, and will. If you don't know what those are about, hang on. I quote, Alfred Joseph, a fictitious name by the way, and I had a discussion recently about his father's estate. His family structure was similar to that of Mr. Alexander in my recent article. His mother died before his father, and Alfred was the only one of his parents' six children who resided in Grenada. After Alfred's father got dementia, he was responsible for organizing care for him. This he did over several years. Alfred had to use his own resources to care for his father, since his father did not employ any estate planning tool to provide for his care in his old age. When his father finally died, he left behind a large estate, but he did not leave a will. Suspecting the answer was no, I still asked Alfred if his father had created a lifetime trust in relation to his estate. Of course, he had not. But Alfred wanted to know why I asked. I took the opportunity to explain to Alfred that as an alternative to a will, his father could have created a lifetime trust a lifetime trust would have allowed his father to have use of his property during his lifetime and to provide for its distribution after he died. Alfred was a bit surprised and told me that he thought that the only way that his father could give directions relating to distribution of his property after his death was by way of a will. While the most often used estate planning tool for distribution of assets after death is by way of a will, it is not the only way. A lifetime trust can serve a similar purpose. There are different types of lifetime trusts, each with its own specifics. However, there are features which apply to all the various types of lifetime trust. A lifetime trust is created by a person referred to as the settlor, transferring property from his name to a trustee. The trust would be governed by the instructions given by the settlor. The instructions would say for whose benefit the property is to be used while the settler is alive and what happens to the property after the settler passes on. A key feature of a lifetime trust is that the settler can be a beneficiary of the trust. A lifetime trust can therefore be a device for a person to have the benefit of his or her assets while alive while making arrangements for its distribution after he or she dies. Establishing a lifetime trust 
can involve substantial legal and administrative costs. Additionally, there may be tax implications, such as the requirement to pay property transfer tax when property is transferred to the trustee. Hence, generally, the use of a lifetime trust for estate planning purposes only makes sense for estates with substantial assets. However, for most persons, the estate planning device to use for distribution of property after death is a will. A will is a written document which contains directions as to how the testator's property is to be dealt with after death. The main difference between a lifetime trust and a will as estate planning tools is that a will has to go through the probate process. If you build your estate plan on a will, following your death, the person you name as executor must make an application to the court to be officially appointed your legal personal representative, or LPR. This application process is referred to as an application for a grant of probate. This is a public process. Your will is one of the documents required to be filed in court as part of the application process. Furthermore, once probate is granted, it must be recorded in the Deeds and Land Registry. Your will is part of the documentation that is recorded and displayed in the registry and available to be viewed by the public. On the other hand, if you build your estate plan on a lifetime trust, your property does not go through the probate process. Following your death, the trustee would distribute or continue to use your estate in accordance with your instructions without being required to obtain the permission or authority of the court. Nor is there any requirement to file your instructions in the deeds and land registry or anywhere else. A lifetime trust, therefore, provides for privacy. The world does not have to know whom you leave your estate to. No. That contribution from Mr. Hewitt Lane. Thank you very much, Hewitt. Keep up the good work. I'm sure that you're helping some people out there who are listening to my words here this morning. And uh, just... Uh, Let's say good morning to Peter Bishop. He's chimed in. Hello, Pedro. Good morning. Good to see you. Now, in the, uh, in the early morning hours of Thursday, January 9th, we will recall that, fire destroyed four buildings located on Grenville Street in St. George's. One of the buildings affected by the fire was the office of Dr. Terence Marichaud. This building housed Dr. Marichaud's laboratory, which provided a wide range of services, inclusive of X-ray services. The equipment used to perform X-rays contained a radiation source which, if compromised, can have very negative impact on the environment and exposed persons. The Grenada Bureau of Standards, along with the Ministry of Health, visited the site on Friday, January 10th, to conduct an assessment to determine if there were any significant levels of radiation present. With the cooperation of the fire department, the team was allowed access to the building and measurements were conducted. No significant levels of radiation were detected. 
The incident, this incident, highlights the importance of having the necessary regulatory and quality infrastructure established for addressing situations involving nuclear and radioactive sources. The Grenada Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Health are currently working along with the International Atomic Energy Agency in establishing the necessary infrastructure for the regulation of and monitoring of radioactive and nuclear sources in Grenada. This would include establishing a database of all of these sources, establishment of a monitoring program for these sources, establishment of response protocol to deal with incidents involving these sources, and finally, provision of basic equipment and training of personnel. As sent to me by the Royal Grenada Police Force yesterday, I hope you're a little bit wiser today. I hope you're a little bit wiser. Okay, so there you have it. That's uh, going to take care of part one of today's edition of uh, Good Day Grenada. And now we're going to take a little break. Eh? And then the national report comes your way. Uh, yes, national report. Inspection and licensing have begun, and at Hotbuds, we want you to be ready. From January to February 15th, we're offering vehicle owners with single registration letters 1 to 2,500 and plural registration letters 1 to 250, 10% off our new torque tires and Power Max batteries. Don't get caught unprepared. Visit us today at our motor department in Mungay or our tire bay in Grand Dance, located near Hubbard's Building Supplies. I'm always on the move, training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Together with you, our customers, we energize our community. Together with you, we energize our economy. We are working together to give our nation a better tomorrow. With you, we energize our future. Together, we energize our nation. Thank you for partnering with us as we energize our spice side. Renlec, energizing our Grenada. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Immigration Department says October was its peak period for issuing e-passports in 2019. Details to this story and more in the National Report. <music> With the details to the news for Monday, January 20, 2020, I am Sherry Noel. 
Officer in charge of the Immigration Department, ASP Leroy Joseph, says since the launch of the e-passport back in July 2018, the busiest period was October 2019. The immigration head says once the announcement came of the increase in the cost from $175 to $250, a number of Grenadians used the opportunity to apply for and renew their passports, a task that was challenging but manageable. We receive about 30, 40 applications per day. And uh, within the, um, the 15th of November to the 30th, 15th of October to the 38th of October, we used to receive 300 a day. So it moved from 30 to 300 per day. So you can understand the workload. Okay. Even the system itself, sometimes, you know, we just shut down because of the workload. Uh, but the staff, I must commend the staff of the Immigration and Passport Department for the hard work and dedication. They're very industrious workers. And um, they work diligently, day and night, okay. all on weekends, <clears throat> to, to produce passport. With the rollout of the e-passports, ASP Joseph says it is the government's intention to increase the number of kiosks at the Morris Bishop International Airport to allow for use other than those that possesses Grenadian nationality. Presently, we are using three kiosks, and it is restricted to only national of Grenada. Now, we are, it is the intention this year to expand it to other nationalities. Okay. So you will get CARICOM National, the UK, the US, and Canada using it. But you must be the holder of an e-passport. And I say that also say the, the benefit of that e-passport. So without an e-passport, you cannot use it. As I said earlier, the information is encrypted into the chip, and it must be readable by the immigration officer. Okay. Uh, so. Sooner or later, we'll find instead of Grenada using that kiosk at the airport uh, to read the passport, we'll open up to other nationality. One must not staple the e-passport, ASP Joseph says, as it is an electronic biometric passport with enhanced security features. Once the data becomes compromised, the passport will become invalid. Okay, you could staple and you could damage the MRZ, the machine readable zone, and that is the end of the life of the passport. Okay. Okay, that is the, 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 the bio page or the data page where your portrait is a photo and, and uh, is on the passport. If you, if you staple that little one or two kind of chevrons in the bottom of it, what you call chevrons, it, that is the end of that life of the passport. It will damage it and it won't be, re it won't be readable. Okay. So when you travel and immigration officers, you may realize, swipe your passport into that small uh, you know, machine, it would not read because you damage your zone and you're not aware of that. So you have to know how to staple it, if you want it to staple, but I would advise person, please don't staple your passport. Okay, I don't just staple mine, I, work, I travel my two pass, my both passports. Right, right. Okay, because I need you may staple it and it damage, you have to get another one for $500. So just protect your passport. Moving along, the second graduation ceremony of Care in Hand Home Care and Nursing Agency was held on Sunday at the St. Mark's Resource Center. Thirteen women are now equipped with the skills to provide geriatric care to the elderly. The program was designed by Mrs. Ann Hopkin, OBE. While addressing the graduate, Mrs. Hopkin stated that the second batch of training began on May 20, 2019, with 19 participants. Six, she says, discontinued the course due to personal reasons. Four have since gained employment, and they are now seeking employment for the remaining nine. It was a challenging time, but you have overcome. I say to you, graduate, always believe in yourself. You can accomplish more than you know. You have more potential than you think. Challenge yourself until you reach your full potential. You have completed one year of hard work and training, and this will certainly serve as a platform to launch yourself into the future. As each of you today travel your own pathway, there will be challenges ahead of you. Parliamentary representative for the constituency of St. Mark, Honorable Clarice Moles Cowen, implored on the graduates to let empathy and not sympathy be the watchword when carrying out their duties. Sympathy is when you say, hey, I'm sorry to hear that, yes, how are you doing? Well, I hope you feel better and you walk away. That is sympathy. Empathy is when you put your foot in the person's shoes, in the family's shoes, and you feel what they're feeling, and you understand what they're feeling, and you make a commitment and an effort to make a difference in their life. 
That is empathy. So sympathy is a good word. Don't get me wrong. But in the field that you are in, the two words are compassion and empathy. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Charlton Henry, urged the graduates to use their gifts to impact the lives of others within their communities. Apply the correct attitude and there is nothing you, can, you, you will not be able to do. So I want you to go there and give it your best. You are working for yourselves, you are working for your community. What you, what you are doing for your community, you are doing it for yourselves. Right? So I just want you to be mindful of that. And I say the, the ministry admires the initiative, and I think we can um, use that to replicate it, spread it throughout Grenada, because I think we need this kind of service. We need, I mean, we need to take responsibility, take own ownership of what we do. Because at the end of the day, when we do this kinds of service, we are doing it for ourselves because we are serving our community. Nesta Edwards, Chief Nursing Officer within the Ministry of Health, commended the Care in Hands Home Care Nursing Agency and Parliamentary Rep, Honorable Clarice Modest Kerwin, for initiating such an important program, saying it's quite relevant for us in Grenada. It is well documented that the elderly population globally is increasing in number. In Grenada, approximately 9 to 10% of our population is over 60 years of age. This has implications for health and home care. We all know that with aging comes the chronic non-communicable diseases and its complications, dementia, and the need for trained persons to meet the needs of the elderly. Generally, elderly persons prefer to be cared for at their homes, within the comfort of their homes. And that's where you, the graduates, comes in. You now have a very important role to play in supporting and complementing the work of the nurses, doctors, and other caregivers within our various communities. A hazardous sea alert was issued on Monday for Grenada by the Meteorological Office at the Morris Bishop International Airport. The release from the Met Office said a frontal system, along with strong winds, have agitated seas conditions, including the breaking wave that poses a threat to life and property within the surf zone. A high surf advisory remained in effect, especially along the northern and western coasts. Our camera captured footage from Cherry Hill, Fontenoy, the Carnage, and Ariza Car Park, which was close to the high seas. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Grenada, it's time to celebrate our 46th anniversary as an independent nation. As we prepare for the future through empowerment, growth, and long-term sustainable development, let's show our true patriotism by participating in the following events. An island-wide independence motorcade on January 25th from Port Highway in St. George from 9 a.m. Then at 8 p.m., we move to the Ceteus Bus Terminus for the Independence Calypso Mona competition. The 46th anniversary cultural extravaganza in St. Andrew on Saturday, February 1st. The National Cleanup Drive from February 1st to 6th. And wait, that's not all. The National Colors Day and Inter-Ministries Competition on February 6th. Then, on February 7th, we head to the Made in Grenada Expo and Military Parade at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Happy 46th, Grenada! Welcome back. At the Ministry of Education, the Special Education Unit is very specialized in its delivery of quality education to students identified as having special needs. These students are catered for both in the special education schools and in the mainstream schools across the Tri-Island State. There is a process for ensuring special needs students receive adequate educational instruction, beginning from the point at which their needs are identified. More in this Annette Moore report. We have come a long way in terms of special education, inclusive education practices in Grenada. We can think back so as far as um, when Mr. David Thomas was given the mandate by cabinet to have um, a special education task force set up where he was the chairman. Um, that went on, went on to having um, a special education desk being set up and then the practice of um, inclusive education, which we know is the trust of 
um, the, of UNESCO, which speaks on the provision of education for all. And not just the provision of education for all, but within the least restrictive environment. And that is where um, inclusive education would have started. The Special Education Unit has four internally based offices, which include two speech language pathologists and two special education officers, one of whom is Jenilyn St. John John, who is responsible for mainland Grenada, and another who is responsible for Karakou and Petite Martinique. These officers do assessments and reports, which assist in providing the necessary support for special needs students. Most of the persons are based at their schools presently, and uh, one of our projects for this year is to um, allow those persons to receive their first degree. So that's, one, that's a project that we are presently working on. Um, as we work on our um, special education needs inclusive education policy, we realize that we have to upskill, and uh, hence the reason why we have um, embarked on that project, um, building capa capacity for our persons who work in the mainstream and uh, will identify students who have challenges and uh, so that they can better support them. St. John John and the principal for the School for the Deaf, Michelle Braffitt, both gave insight regarding the operation of the Special Education Unit as it relates to its functions, inclusive education, and the concept of itinerant teachers. St. John John says students are initially identified by teachers or parents as having special needs, following which these students are assessed by the special education unit and a decision made as to whether the student will remain in the mainstream school or be placed at one of the three special education schools. Most of the times we prefer the children remain in the mainstream school and given that support from the school's end. Presently, students who are deaf as well as students who are visually impaired and also hard of hearing. So we have deaf students who will use sign language, hard of hearing who may have a level of um, hearing and may have speech, as well as students who are visually impaired or within the mainstream schools or what we call regular schools. We want for our students to have the opportunity at the entire curriculum. Um, there is no need for a child who is deaf to be in a special school. Uh, away from their peers, but to be integrated or included within the mainstream setting. St. John John described the difference between being a special needs student in a mainstream school versus being in a special education school. At the special school, um, the students are more or less similar um, abilities and they are like within a, a large group. But within that large group, the teachers will um, cater to their individual needs. In the mainstream school, you have the students might be, will be in the, in the regular classroom and they are pulled out to work one-on-one -on, -one on a specific need that was identified after assessments are done. To assist students in mainstream schools, the Special Education Unit has itinerant teachers. They are specialized in working one-on-one -on -one with special needs students. So what we have happening there is that the teachers who are within the School for the Deaf and the teachers who are within the Resource Center, they function as itinerant teachers. So this basically means they move from school to school. Students are assisted from the early childhood education level all the way up to the tertiary level. They travel to the schools daily working with these students. But at the end of the week, they return to base where we reflect on our practices and we plan for the following week. So this has been working well. A student can be moved from a mainstream school to a special education school and vice versa. Once we realize a child is is, is um, able to go back. There's a lot that has, will have to be considered before that decision is made, that the child is ready to go back into the mainstream school and with the cooperation of the child, the parent, then the child will go back into the mainstream school. And uh, we had a few examples where children went back into the mainstream school and they did very well. The Ministry of Education, through its Special Education Department, aims to ensure quality education for all its special needs students. At the special schools, we are aiming to allow the children to do whatever placement exams, whatever exams that might be happening at the mainstream school, 
we are aiming to do the same thing at the special school. We have had success stories of children now passing the um, CPA, CPA exams. We would have had them going on to places like Nulo. We'd have had them going on to TAM CC. So we are having success stories with the practice of inclusive education. For the National Report, I'm Annette Moore. And with that story, we come to the end of the National Report for Monday, January 20th, 2020. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sherry Ann Noel, thanking you for viewing. folks there you have it that's uh, last night's edition of the national report now while you guys were listening to that we were joined by the likes of uh, Judith Charles Frank Alexander Merrill Forsyth is that the Merrill Forsyth Merrill used to be probably one of the best known civil servants in this place yeah Cabinet Secretary, yeah, that's that's Ray there. We'll talk with him in just a wee bit. Um, before I take the break and get to Ray, I want to share a comment which I received uh, overnight by email from uh, our good friend Michael Alexander. Michael says, hi, George, good evening. I'm not able to listen to you live, but I make it my duty to listen in the evening when I get home. And the program by the Bain Sisters, we did that yesterday morning, is very important because I'm hearing this afternoon, what I'm hearing this afternoon is very frightening with the National Health Insurance Plan. This information should really get out to the general public. Because how many persons really know what is going on with this NHI? George, I wonder if you can bring this one on SWGG, where I think you have a wider audience. Thank you, Michael. Michael, as soon as I was through with that program yesterday with uh, Gemma Bain and Janice, I decided without a doubt, I have to run that piece on Sunday. I mean, a lot of the stuff I was hearing there just freaked me out. And it's not the type of stuff that I'm hearing in the mainstream media. And Gemma Bain actually met with the people from GIPA, that's the uh, organization that's coming here to work on this health insurance plan. Very, very powerful stuff, and yes, it will be shared on uh, yeah, Sunday. Break time, and then Mr. Roberts. Hey, Lynn. Hey, neighbor. Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need, and we unplug transformers, chargers, and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Greenleck is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. 
with fuel prices changing all the time. How do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. This should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Alrighty, folks, you guys weren't uh, very proactive during the national report. Just a few comments. I want to share them very quickly. Um, regarding the health care, Ryan Jabon says the increase. Hold on a sec here. Uh, da -da -da -da. He says empathy is crucial and compassion in health care. Em Let me try that again. Empathy is crucial with compassion in health care. So, so says Ryan. Margaret responds by saying, true, Ryan, but I'm not sure it's something that can be taught. Good point, Max. Um, he comes back and says, the increased reports reaching me about abuse of the elderly in Grenada is annoying. Uh, he goes on to say, Mags, I teach therapeutic nursing communication to BSN undergraduate student nurses in their mental health clinical rotation and teach empathy skills and open-ended interviewing skills and reflection. Yes, compassion is innate. Margaret says, Ryan Jabon, they need you in Grenada. Empathy and compassion do not exist in the health professionals vocabulary and being. Uh, Benedict Cador saying hi to Mrs. Forsythe. I'm assuming that's uh, former post uh, former cabinet secretary like Ray suggested. 
Uh, he says accounting department, Ministry of Finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lawrence Kruthoff is saying good morning. He says he's watching and listening. You're always watching and listening, huh? Huh? And uh, Ryan Jaban says no mags. Anyhow, let me say good morning. Here he is. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. You're. You're, you're red for so this morning. You're hot stuff. <laughs> I don't know about that one. I know that's the jersey I picked up. Oh, well, that's the one you picked up. <laughs> right, morning. that's correct. Listen, uh, oh, by the way, Anthony the Riggs is saying, Ray, did you take a little swim at Grand Nines yesterday? No, I did not go yesterday, neither this morning. When it's rough, that's not my time. You're it's afraid? You're not afraid? really, not really. Yes. Um, um, what we call it? We used to call it Lally nowadays. Uh, uh, but um, that comes up to the show, and you know it doesn't make sense actually, because the water is dark. It's not, yeah. you know, crystal clear as you would normally enjoy. Yeah. So for me, and uh, once it's rough, I don't. I'll tell you, Ryan, uh, the rigs. I don't find the seas as rough as when I knew it in the 70s and so forth. When you were a little boy. No, no, no. I, I remember big working, and that, that talk was the sea is looking for a soul. Right, right. I remember that. <laughs> That's I remember good. that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you would be careful how you treat with the sea. I don't find I see rough seas anymore. Yesterday I had a little that brought back some memories. I, I, I was really amazed to see the surfers, how they were, you know, guiding through this. 10 foot wheel. People actually went out surfing. Yeah, yeah, I saw some guys in the Grand Valley area there. Um, yeah, Grand Cherry Hill, that's in front of Cherry Hill, Grand Valley. There. Okay. Yeah. You know, the, the Met Office, they did put out an advisory right. warning that there was this system that, I think it might have been to the west of us, and it was going to be creating swells on the west coast right. and on the north coast right. of the island. And I'll tell you what. Oh, by the way, oh, Margaret says, yeah, Ray, I agree with you. I don't go in them kind of water. <laughs> you know, a little twig like her, that'd be gone with her. She it's can't a, swim. A flash. Her mother, I suppose, could swim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you have to learn to swim again before you encounter such. Um, Ryan says, Ray, rough waves and algae in the seawater is off-putting. And grand dance. Yeah. Uh, Anthony says, "True, Ray. I remember the waves at Melville Street." Yep, that's correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're back street there. Well, yeah, I'll tell correct. you what, Ray. Mm -hmm. I got my hands on three videos. Mm -hmm. One that you sent to me yesterday, mm -hmm. showing what was happening by the Arisa place down there. Right, crazy. Okay. Yeah. I want to show all three. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second one shows that we're not the only one who have been subjected to this. You should see what's been going on in Trinidad as well. Okay. Okay. And the third one came from somebody who I used to run into every time I went to the beach mm -hmm. in the morning. A lady by the name of Marcel Toussaint. Right. All right. Let me start with the one you showed us or you sent me yesterday. This is near to the, uh, this is near to the, uh, the Horizon right, Coast. You know that? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah, somebody's building on the shore. <laughs> yeah, that's how I guess the water can be. And what the other time. 
The things I stay away from, but no, nah, I don't bother. Now watch this. The weeds. Morning. Well, as you can see, angry sea it hasn't abated since yesterday. In fact, hmm, a little bit more ferocious. All our, the usual beach climbers are here doing their morning walk, but yeah, it's fierce. See all the roots, hotels have their sandbags they put out for protection. Check it. Water is right up. Mm. Well, Phil, I'm sorry to say, well, if high tide is at midday and it's like this now, probably have more problems when that comes than you did yesterday. Pray not. Wow. And look at that beautiful day. The start of a beautiful day. Amen. Right, back to the second half of our walk. Area. Well, I've seen bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah. And having born in the area, no, nah, it's not. I mean, we custom with that if you're born in that area. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. like a normal day in the case. Yesterday I was standing on the balcony here and mm. you can see all the way down to Quarantine Point, right? Right. Man, you should see the breakers on the point down there. Anyhow, let me, let's check out some of the comments that came in while mm -hmm. watching that. Um, let me see here. Da, 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 da. Oh boy, you guys really letting it rip this morning. Um, uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay. Um, Anthony the Rig says, Ray, what is Cian's? Oh, well, yeah, I don't see it, but I know it. But sometimes I get but bitten. Yeah, sometimes. I don't. And you see red marks come up on your skin, particularly yeah. on your back and so forth. Uh, I've never seen one actually, but I feel the sting. Yes. 
<laughs> I have never seen sea heads. I have never seen it actually. But I have I, stung my stuff in the water. That's correct. I know sometimes with the algae and so forth, it is alleged that the uh, sometimes are within that stuff. Okay. I don't know how true it is. Margaret, Margaret, hmm. Margaret just looks for every opportunity yeah. she can to go after Ray. She says, <laughs> hold it, Ray. I can swim. I learned at Mount Pandy as a kid and graduated the Grand Dance. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> uh, I, I, I you see, I could see for our mother. I see our mother. Well, I haven't seen her for the year on the beach, but I'm not, uh, I've never seen her there. So that's why I jumped to conclusion. Well, she, she stays away from Grand Dance. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. I thought it was a problem with swimming. Her. That huh? she can't, I tell her the problem that she could not swim. No, 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 no. Max yeah. can swim. All right. Actually, if anybody could swim, Max could. She's so light. Yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> so, okay. She's like a twig. Okay. Yeah. Um, she says here, what is that brownish green stuff? Is that from the sea? Mm -hmm. That's in your opinion? Yeah. No, no, no. I guess that's the quality of the camera. Uh, what you see on the ground there, that's the grass from being bitten by, by, being burnt by the sun. That's a car park by a riser. By a riser. Yeah, you know, there are two car parks. The one is a concreted um, platform and the other is just the earth. Okay. Well, I guess the sun and what have you may have taken toll on it. So that's why it's so brown. Okay. Yeah. Ryan says, Melville Street, seawater raging again. Now, Anthony the Riggs. <laughs> Ray. What are the chances of the sea reclaiming structures at the mall? I don't know. I'm not an engineer, and I pray it doesn't happen. But again, I trust that um, the people who have done the work will have been very knowledgeable and are tuned with the modern science. Yeah. I would hope so. That's what I would hope, because you know, it's not something that we could lift and say, put it in Granans or put it in Karakou or St. David's. It's something that will be there quite a while and we would hate to see it as a, a hazard. Yeah. So I hope yeah. that um, um, what is there is really, you know, um, it can resist whatever is occurring really in the environment. Ryan has some advice here. He says, dangerous reptiles in this raging seawater, keep out. And essentially, <laughs> uh, the Met Office was asking people yesterday, you know, stay out. Not the surfers, you should see that man. I was fascinated the way they got, the, how, how, how they maneuvered the big waves and the small waves. Uh, I mean, fantastic. 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 I would love to, in the next world, I wouldn't try it in this world. In the next world, I would want to be part of that. I mean, George, you just had to be astonished at the way they were guiding themselves through this thunderous, huge wave that covered them and then they bust out untouched. Ah, so, you, so you want to go uh, surfing? I would love to be part of that. I mean, the adventurous. You, you, George, I mean, at one point, I couldn't see one of the surfers. Said that the wave must have, you know, capsized him or something of the sort. And then you see him emerges yeah. untouched. And his arms are out and he's balancing his way to another wave. Well. Somebody is concerned, a lady by the name of Michelle Forsythe, she mm. says, Dear Waves, she's, <laughs> she's praying to the waves now, Dear Waves, please, please, leave some sand on Grand Dance for me when I come in August. The, it, it has been there for a while, has never taken away all the sand. Let's hope it does not this time. John Franco says it's unusual for this time of the year. Yeah, I know it around Christmas. September, that's when it's really huge. I agree, John. I, have, I don't know about it in, at this time of the year, actually. Anthony is responding to Ryan here. He says, yes, Ryan, once I got caught in a dangerous riptide at Pandy Beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so he knows, right? Yeah, he knows about Pandy. Margaret says, I don't know, but I have seen Grand Dance in the Esplanade area like that before yeah. at this time of the year. She, uh, I'm not too sure about January. Maybe it did, maybe it did. But I'm more familiar with the September um, period and the Christmas and that old tradition, that thinking, the sea is looking for a soul. 
and maybe around the hurricane season, you'll see some real rough of tides, but I'm not too sure about this time of the year. Uh, just sidetracked here a little bit. Devon Joseph says, after listening to the big, <laughs> it's not the Rain Sisters, Devon, it's the Bain, Bain Sisters. Mm. After listening to the Bain Sisters on the NHI, it is frightening. Citizens will be paying more, but I don't think the situation would improve much for the ordinary citizens. Getting back to the weather, Anthony says, if Ray named man, let him take a leader in that water. You understand what he's saying? Not quite. Go over. We let him come again, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> um, Raj Bob says, swim parallel to the shoreline, then you will be ejected on the beach. That's right. I like that one. And that's what I do these days. Okay. Yeah. Hi, um, <laughs> H-A-I, W, Canning says, they used to say, go pee in the water, CN will bite you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I remember that too. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. I remember thank that. Thank you, Mr. Canning, for, for the reminder. I never heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess something on the urine attracts. I don't know. I don't think that's true. <laughs> that's not true. All right. I mean, um, Kipling Francis says, it would be more accurate for someone to say that this is the worst they have seen, instead of saying that is the worst ever. I have seen a lot worse in Bath Way. I would think so. Yeah, he may be right. Well, come on, even at its best of times, Bath yeah. Way is our Yeah, life. that's correct. <laughs> I think what is good about it, I think it's a timely reminder for us. Because, um, you know, construction is just on helter-skelter. I mean, there's no physical planning. I mean, what you have is less than a rubber stamp. I mean, so you can't have any respect for that institution. Yeah. I mean, that is, you know, you better close that down. What's happening is like a maroon in the old days. You take a piece of land and you build a house, because that's what's happening here. So I think it's a pretty good reminder for government and the society that we ought to pay attention to what we are doing. Because here comes a Molinier. I don't know if you saw a piece on the bridge in St. Andrew, that bridge when you're going across uh, to the airport. Yeah. Uh, uh, progress. Pro and right, and that's right. <laughs> it looks as terrible as anything else. And then there's one in St. David's. Yeah. That one is not a bridge, a road, right? So I think it's a timely reminder for us to pay attention to what we're doing and just don't helter-skelter about the police. You know, yes, it looks good on TV, economic development. People are busy and beautiful homes are being built, but we're destroying the police. And I don't know if you saw a piece uh, Sandra circulated about the Grand Ans area, the beach, and the proximity of hotels and yeah, what yeah, have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, that again, I wish, I wish, you know, the cabinet could sit and forget the, you know, branding who's NDC and NNP and who want to see the end of this. It is something we need to intelligently sit and just give it a bit of, uh, let it sink in. Because <laughs> really and truly, we may not be around, but those who we leave will see these old bitches that went before us never cared about us. Yeah. So I, I, I trust that um, memories will rekindle at this point. Ryan says, Portuguese man of war. Sea animal stings. You know, I wonder if that could be confused with the supposed sea ants. The Portuguese man of war, they, they sting. Okay, right? okay, okay. I know at times, Grand Grand's Beach, you do find what they call sea ants. Margaret is agreeing with Kipling. You know, Kipling saying, don't say this is the worst ever, say it's the worst that you've seen. Quite so. Um, Margaret says, agreed, Kipling. I had a bad experience at Bathway with those waves. It's the beach I respect. You know, even in that swimming area, yeah, yeah. you can stand there and just be dragged <laughs> down there. There's a strong current in there. I don't know that. I, I think I might have 
just walked in the water. But there's no reason for me to want to be in Bartwee. Absolutely no reason. Just as I said to you about Maracas in Trinidad. Yeah. I didn't consider it a beach. I consider Grand Dance and Paradise in Karakou and the many in Pity Martinique. I consider beaches, but I don't think I want to be any part of um, the Bartwee experience, except the environment. I like Bartwee. It's a lovely place. I wish I was even staying there, actually. But not the sea in front there. Uh, Ivan says, I know it's the Bain sisters, it's just the type in the state, George. Da, 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 da. Ivan. Okay, uh, Ernesto says, good morning, George and family, including Ray. We're facing a... Okay, Ernesto. We're facing an unemployment issue in Grenada, especially youth employment. Now we're hearing that retirees being employed on a number of occasions while the, while the young people still seeking employment. Ryan Tabon says, Simone River, Wooden Bridge, close to my family, is dilapidated and falling to pieces near the Pearls Airstrip just this week. Yeah. I have seen where somebody's calling on the authorities to do something about that. Yeah, yeah, and that's the only traffic light that is on at the moment. Eh? So the five million or how many million that we invested in traffic light, that's the only one that is left of it all. <laughs> yeah, and nobody bothers that we spend that money maybe, what, 10 years ago, a few years ago, and it has all disappeared into thin air. None of the lights are working, except that, that single one in, um, uh, on the AC Moons Bridge. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Ray, listen. I mean, I forgive my manners, but, you know, usually I say, hey, what's up your sleeve this morning? <laughs> well, I didn't even ask him what's up his sleeve this morning. We just went right into uh, the sea. The sea. What's up your sleeve? Ray? Well, I thought we were going to talk about that this morning. That's because you gave me a heads up. But I would still say let's not ignore the fact that our young West Indians have done exceedingly well <laughs> in South Africa. They have beaten the big two, Australia and England, consecutively. And there's a young man, Naeem Young. I think he's Guyanese. Awesome. I mean, I think the English and the Aussies must be wondering where did they find this young, talented, um, six foot, six footer. I mean, he just spanked the bowlers, bowler after bowler, when these two teams apparently had the upper hand. He just walked out there like Viv Richards and said, you, you fellas, let me show you a thing or two. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I've looked at that team over and over. Fourth player in the history of the tournament have taken five wickets and to score consecutive half centuries. Mm. What was nice though, his parents, were there, our family members were there in, in, okay. in South Africa. Uh, I am really elated to see something of that magnitude in Caribbean cricket. I mean, it doesn't look like we're trying to bring back the old guys and hope that their legs are as good as yours, George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is something that is very refreshing. So the West Indies are certainly going to make it into the quarterfinals. They have Nigeria to play in the final game. And poor Nigeria is not going to beat anybody. Not even an upset they are capable of doing. So you're saying that a couple of years down the road, we, we may have a cricket team going? I hope, well, we have a team, but I hope that we can be a real team. A team where they are, um, if not carbon copy, a uh, clone of a Lara, a Richards, a Clive Lloyd. I mean, this kid is, I mean, he plays strokes all around the wicket. And he does it authoritatively. And then there's this smile that <laughs> tells you, come back again. You vex, <laughs> come back again. You know? <laughs> there are some people, that, yeah, there are some people who do things to you. And you don't mind them doing it. It's the look on the face. Yeah, yeah I'm ready again. You come again. So uh, I, I can see how the Caribbean feels, you know, for once. Yeah. We're not playing second fiddle. We are. We have no, because they were kind of rude in writing it that West Indies 
created a major upset by beating Australia. And then England comes, and they weren't upset. They were beaten badly. <laughs> so the word upset and major disappeared from the articles. Yeah, the only to say the Caribbean looks like they are a real threat to being the champion. All right. Since the West Indies cricket board mm -hmm. made the changes mm -hmm. what, a year or so ago, yeah. Um, would you say that you're seeing some change in the mindset of West Indies cricket that may not have been there prior to the changes made on the WIC? I would agree with you. I think management has a lot to do with it. I think um, Cameron was a little too confrontational. There are things that you have to ignore in life. You know, it's just like the teachers, um, government issue. Um, I wanted to mention that you, you know, have the basketball tournament. And basketball is basically second just to athletics in terms of participation from young people. I think the American aspect of it has rubbed off on our psyche. Because you see the NBA, you see the college, and both of them are on right now. And um, the tournament is on, but we, we don't have the maximum number of schools participating. I was told yesterday that a couple of schools called to indicate that they have dropped out because the matches are after 3 o'clock, so they have dropped out. So the point I'm making here is that, um, yes, you're not paying the teachers the deduction in the salary, and uh, perhaps it's your right, but check the consequences. So I'm seeing Cameron, uh, some of his ideas were good. He had good ideas, but the constant um, um, confrontation, he and the prime ministers and different boards and so forth, I don't, he and the players, I don't think that lends itself to anything other than chaos. So I would agree that um, Skerritt has been a much more level-headed and seems to have had the respect of the players who seemingly want to do much more than they were doing in the past. To me, in the past, they were collecting their salaries. So they are conscious now that they have to satisfy the directors, the people of the Caribbean, and they need to work on their work, I think. Well, you bring a degree of optimism to the audience this morning, which I certainly hope they do appreciate. Now, let me ask you this. Um, have you heard anything more about the intercom? I mean, we're getting well, I saw high school in Tantine, was it yesterday, running the heat. That's Margaret's school, eh? So I, I have to be careful what I'm saying. And her, her principal was 80 years old yesterday. So I have to be so happy birthday to her you. Principal was her eight, former principal. Her former principal, principal was 80? 80, 80, eight, 80 years old? Yeah. So um, a happy birthday, belated birthday to you. Um, Send a birthday card. Yeah. <laughs> but... That is a positive sign. But again, I'm saying, yes, you can have these events, but you need holistic involvement. So you may have it, but is it what really you would want it to, to be, or just a shadow of it? I'm glad to have seen them, the young people out there, you know, doing what they have to do. But that was within the working hours. <laughs> that I saw them there about, I would think, um, maybe 11 o'clock. I think I would say um, in excess of 100 of them, maybe 100, 150, 11 times, right. throwing javelin, um, whatever they were doing, maybe it's, ex it's the physical education time. But I would hope that that can be resolved because clearly the only people losing there are the young pe people and the parents. Because where you can get these kids believing in themselves that they can be a career athlete or uh, Pan American game, Central American, and you know, thinking beyond that to Olympics. I mean, that will only start in the school. So if you can get that, I mean, parents may be less burdensome with the kid or the boy or the girl wanting to WhatsApp whole day or when they come home on the computer or be in some kind of group that really and truly is useless. So I think we need to think, you know, the broader terms of it. Just as you speak about the health, the health um, program. I'm glad that there are people who are, who are dissecting the thing and challenging the thing so it can bring out, uh, let's say, a better quality. Um, because if it's just packaged and we all agree, you now you have people challenging, examining it, and looking at the cost, 
I hope that that's the debate we want in, 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 you know, in, in Grenada, not the debate that there's an earthly God who just can prescribe everything right. We know, that, we know that's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. I was going to ask you about uh, the national health insurance. Um, I don't know whether you heard the program yesterday or not. No, I'm, I would have missed that during the course of the Check it out later on, yeah. today, boy, because there was some very, very crucial points raised about this. And if you miss it, if you're not able to check it out, check it out on, on the side. Sunday. Right. Uh, okay. We're going to run on Sunday morning. Um, you know, you said it's nice that people are starting to ask questions and, and challenge things. And. Uh, Civil society met with the organization, JIPA, recently. Yes. It was last week. That was the 14th of this month. So that's last Even week. That yeah. No, I thought it was 3 o'clock, but it was 1 o'clock. Okay. So I missed it. But Sandra promised to send me some of the salient points. Well, one of the people who made a presentation at that uh, meeting was uh, Gemma Bain Thomas. Okay, yes. I'm and she was on here yesterday, and uh, she opened a lot of eyes. She and her sister, because her sister is a doctor right, right. In, in the United States. And that's why I really think it's important that we run this. Um, well, Ray, just about time to scoot. But hmm. once again, you ain't going nowhere <laughs> until you put na, take a turn in the tail. What have I done? <laughs> what has he done? I what did has I... he done? Margaret <laughs> says, watch it, Ray. What have I done? Tell me. She said, we know you're biased to the Jeez. school on the other side of the hill. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe she would have resurrected that. There's no repentance with her and forgiveness? <laughs> you guys can settle your scores <laughs> off air, okay? Yeah, well, you can ask her which house she was. I think she was. was Wharton? I think I'm not too sure. Wharton? Yeah, I think she might have been in that house. Which house, Max? Wharton? We're not going to wait. We're not going to wait. <laughs> but he'll find out anyway. Thanks a lot, Raymond. All right, all right, my brother. Good to be with you, and certainly hope as the year progresses, you can get much of what you desire to make this bigger, better, and greater. It's great, but bigger, better, and greater wouldn't hurt. We're trying, boy. We're trying. Right. We're trying. We need a computer. We need a computer. We need a computer. She says we're trying. OK, OK. <laughs> She says Bertrand and he. <laughs> he laughs. I have to. Yeah, yeah. Does that say volumes about yeah. Bertrand? Yeah, she was a strong supporter of her school. There's no question about it. I made a mistake here, and I think I've been innocent, but they, they crucified me. I said, the ladies on the blessed hill and the dark horses of Tati, George and she, and her, that's where I got to know her. Crucified me for days. How do I find a sentence? to add the ladies on the blessed hill. I said, but I was just trying to magnify the convent because it's on a hill, but the dark horse in town. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you guys settled this. Did you see her when she was here? Yes, I saw her. I tried to ask her a credit card, but I didn't get you. OK. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Raymond. George, see you next Tuesday. Please, the Lord. God willing, my friend. OK. Uh, while it's always such a treat having you come and sit here and keep me company, it's, it's kind of lonely sometimes. You know? Right, right. Uh, it's nice to have you here, but uh, I know it's not always convenient for you to. Uh, I'll let you know when it's not. Grand dance. No, I'll let you know when it's not. I'm going to pay my license now. You're going to pay your license? Yeah, I don't want to, I want to avoid a rush. Okay. My okay. number is in the first batch, started on the 15th, goes to the 15th of the next month. All right. So I'm going to go line up this morning. And P. Go line up. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad I don't have it. I'm glad I don't have it. Take it easy, bro. Good, man. All right, hang on there for just a sec. All righty, <laughs> folks, I'll tell you what. Time now to pull the curtain down. Let's see where we are. George, you've got to get your act together. He's now gone 20 minutes over time. You're making this a habit. Get your act together. Parting word from the Holy Scriptures this morning comes to you from the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. You can consider this advice. 
I quote, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. That reading, check it out yourselves. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3. Verses 1 to 5. On that note, Georgie had breakfast this morning, so he can't lie and say he's going to feed his face. Right? He had breakfast this morning. On that note, my dear friends, you have a wonderful day. Uh, for those of you who are visiting the island, I certainly hope you have a marvelous day taking in the sights and sounds of Grenada. And I do pray that you'll join us tomorrow morning, same time, 9 o'clock, in the meantime. May the good Lord bless and keep you.